All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yes, yeah, I've got a great vlog for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Before we get anywhere going into this vlog, I uh, just want to do a quick uh, little, eh, I don't know, reminder, whatever. As you are watching this vlog, if you're here on Thursday, which is vlog day, which is today because it's vlog day, or if you're here on a Friday or if you're here on Saturday, or if you're here on Sunday, I'm gone. I'm going to be gone again to Chicago up in Illinois for Vape Bash. Really excited, really excited to hang out at Vape Bash again. Going to squat up and uh, hang out, just have a good old time. Should be really fun. So just as fair warning that a lot of things like emails, Instagram, and comments, and this, that, and the other it might have a pretty long, slow response time. As I've said a bajillion, zillion times before, I am just one, I'm just one man. I am but one man, and if I'm not here to answer emails, then that's it. No, nobody's here to answer emails. If I'm not here to respond to comments, then that's it. There's nobody else to, you know, to respond to comments. And uh, someone made a great point the other day and said that I should hire somebody to travel with me to vape events to film. Um, because 10 times out of 10, when I'm at a vape event, I'm always forgetting to film stuff. Like, you know, you saw in the UK Vape Jam video, there was like an entire day that was like three clips just because I got, you know, busy. I got distracted. I got carried away talking to people and meeting people that I just didn't film. And so someone said, hey, you should get someone at vape events to just film like from a third, you know, perspective, uh, which, you know, I think that would kind of be... Uh, Kind of be a little bit cool. So let me get my vlog notes out here. We do have a lot of stuff to talk about. There's going to be some advocacy, as always, right here at the top of the show. We're going to do some beer tastings. Oh, yes. It's been a while since we've done some beer, so I'm excited to get into some beer again. Of course, there's going to be shout-outs. I have a mess just a whole mess of first impressions to do this week. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I don't have a retro vaping segment prepared. I have a feeling that that's actually going to be a good thing because these first impressions are probably going to run uh, a little bit on the long side. So not having a retro vaping segment is probably going to be a good thing. We're also going to announce the contest uh, giveaway winner towards the end of the video. And this week, I promised to include my favorite comments of the week. I couldn't believe that I forgot it. I forgot favorite comments of the week last week. That is ridiculous. I want to give a quick shout out to Chelsea from Society of Vape for the Hat. So let me tell you the story of this hat. It says Grim, and then there's the Society of Vape logo behind it. So well over a year ago, it was like a year, it was almost like a year and a half ago, I think, I was talking with Chelsea from Society of Vape, whom I just love. She is just a wonderful, wonderful person about doing a collaboration like She's like, hey, we should do like a collaboration hat or something. And I'm like, bro, that would be amazing. I would love to do, I mean, I love Chelsea. I love Society of Vape. I, it would be a great fit to do some Grim Green Society of Vape hats. I think people would be stoked on that. I would love to do that. And we even went so far as to like, Post it on social media. I don't. I wish I could go back and see the exact date I posted this picture. But we we both posted it on social media. We're like, what up, big collaboration coming soon. Society of Babe Grim Green. It's gonna be so great. And then I remember she was flying home from somewhere, and she's like, hey, I have a long plane flight. Send me some graphics so I can work on the hat. You know, on my laptop on the plane. And I was like, boom, done. That was the last time that either of us spoke about the hat. It just ceased to be a thing. It just didn't happen. So fast forward a year and a half to my birthday and Chelsea and Dwayne, oh, Mr. Ownboy OC, they came down uh, on my birthday to surprise me. Um, my lady friend Pickle got us tickets to a Padres game, which was great, great fun. Uh, my good friends Britt and Sean, Mr. Sean Trooper, were there as well. And it was kind of like this big surprise. Like, I literally, I'm oblivious. I had no idea what was going on. We get to the game, like, my friends are there. I'm like, oh, we're drinking beer and watching the game and eating tater tots and stuff. And then Chelsea and Dwayne have these, they show up with both wearing these grim hats. And for my birthday, Chelsea, the wonderful person that she is, made three. Three of these grim hats exist. I have one, Chelsea has one, and Dwayne has one. And you know what? 
that's it. That we're probably never going to do a hat, but I I treasure this hat not just because it's cool and I love society of vape, but I being a very sentimental person, I am very sentimentally attached to this hat now because it's kind of, you know, I don't know, uh, a good friendship time birthday that was really like a very special night to me. And, and the people that were there, Dwayne and, and Chelsea and obviously Pickle and Sean and Britt, I love them uh, into the ground and I just had a great time. And so that's that's the story of the Grim Hat. You'll probably see it pop up in a couple videos. You know, it's not necessarily going to replace Clutch or what's the other one I wear a lot? California. That's one I wear a lot. Or my new Grim Army one. Or I got a V-God hat, which you saw in the travel vlog as well. But yeah, that's the story of the hat. I just wanted to make sure that I avoided all of the comments and emails that say, bro, Grim, where can I get that hat? It's so super sick. But if, if you even think it's super sick. Anyway, here we go. Moving forward. A quick little update on... Quick little update on California. So this was mentioned. Um, I kind of already talked about this a little bit in episode four of the Culture of Clouds podcast, which if you haven't heard, head over to cultureofclouds.com. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on SoundCloud. You can listen to them on the website. They're also on iTunes in the podcast app, Culture of Clouds. Just search for it. Hit that little subscribe. And the, the, you can hear all of the podcasts. Me and Ruby have just been having the most fun time with this podcast. It has just been amazing. But we talked about this in the last issue. Last issue? What? It's not a magazine. Last episode of Culture of Clouds podcast, episode four. California legislature admits holding tobacco bills to stall threat. This comes to us from the Sacramento Bee.com. And like I said in the podcast, I believe it was Doug Hughes from Boilermaker that posted this. But essentially, essentially there's some shady stuff going on in California. I know it's it's shocking, isn't it? But basically, they are stalling these bills so that there is no chance there let me let me get the exact word there's one word that i'm thinking of referendum they are stalling this bill in the legislature and this is the one in california that's pretty really really very bad this is part of sbx 2-5 this is part of that not all of, not not just that it's it's actually bigger than that but they are stalling this in the legislature, so there's no chance for a referendum. And I didn't know what a referendum was. And so, thankfully, we live in the electronic age, and I just Googled referendum, and it says, a general vote by the electorate, electorate on a single political question that has been referred to them for a direct decision. So, basically, they're stalling this bill in the legislature so that there's no chance that the public would have a say or be able to vote on this subject. <laughs> what? That sounds shady af to me. And one thing that they're doing, uh, the verbiage that they're using in this article is they're lumping the vaping industry or the vapor product industry in with big tobacco. They're essentially calling us Big Tobacco. She says, our job is to ensure the passage of these bills and not to let tobacco companies kill them. Tobacco companies being vapor companies. Okay, they've been willing to use aggressive tactics. So a tool that we have is when we release these bills to the governor. So they are saying that we are part of the tobacco industry because they want vaping to be part of tobacco for some reason because see this see this uh juice bottle right here that's tobacco you didn't know it see this little rda right here you didn't know it but this according to california should be tobacco so they want to call us tobacco they're saying we're using aggressive strategies so because we're using aggressive strategies, <clears throat> not blowing smoke, <laughs> they're going to use their aggressive strategy and stall this bill out in the legislature so there's no chance for us to shoot it down. Great, right? Thanks. Thanks for nothing, California. Thanks for representing us. Our only hope, and it's always been our last hope, is that uh, Governor Jerry Brown vetoes these. So I'm going to link in the description to this from the SACB.com where you can check it out if you're so interested. There's also a very, 
very crucial call to action going on, guys, right now. And look, there's a lot, lot of calls to actions always always happening. If you are a CASA member, you're probably getting emails for these. If not, become a CASA member. Go to CASA.org and check out their calls to actions. I always, always link in the description to the CASA call to action page and you will see just how many calls to action there are going on. But this one, this one is crucial. This one, if you're watching this right now, you need to pause this vlog and go do it because this is something that they have pushed forward very, very intensely. It says it could be, uh, it could happen as early as the week of the 11th, which is, duh, this week. That is this week. So basically, this call to action is to take an action to oppose a ban on flying with vapor products. So for what seems like forever now, uh, batteries and mods <clears throat> and vapor products, etc., have been banned from checked bags. Then that's a safety thing, so they don't want uh, lipo batteries or any batteries in your checked bag because the checked bags go under the plane. And they don't want anything under there. You know, it's just bags under there. There's not someone walking around monitoring to see if batteries are venting or if anything's, you know. So, yeah, they banned them from your checked bags. Well, now they want to extend that ban to include your carry-on bags as well. Electronic smoking devices is what they call them. And the way that this is worded, it's so poorly worded that it includes devices and mods with no batteries in them because that even without batteries even without an atomizer attached is an electronic smoking device you can tell just from reading this just from the way it's worded that the people who wrote it mr fucking blumenthal literally have no idea what vaping is what, how to, you know, any, anything about it, anything about any sort of mods or anything. And, you know, if it was, look, even if it was something reasonable, like, uh, no unlocked DNA 200s in your carry on bags, you know what I mean? And if TSA or the airlines were checking and saying, Oh, your DNA 200 is locked. You're good. You can put that in your carry on or no, loose lipo batteries or no loose lithium ion batteries i mean just to even show that they remotely know what they're talking about but the fact that they say electronic smoking device even without batteries is still considered an electronic smoking device this is some of the most stupid legislation that I have ever seen. So what I'm gonna do is link in the description to this particular call to action. You can click, send an email, it takes you like 30 seconds, maybe, but it's something that is really crucial. Can you imagine you're gonna fly back home to visit your family? You can take zero vape stuff. Could you imagine that? It would be like if they said, no pants. You can't take pants on a plane. We're banning pants from all checked luggage and all carry-on luggage. So you arrive at the airport pantless, you fly pantless, and then when you land, what you do is, is on your own. If you want to buy pants while you're there and wear them, sure, but you can't bring those pants back with you. You'd have to leave them wherever you are and fly home with no pants. And then when you get home back to your closet, you can wear all the pants you want. That's how ridiculous this sounds in my head. I personally, and I know a lot of you out there, fly and travel to vape events, to vacations, to visit your family no vape gear. You would not be able to take any vape gear at all, even if it has no batteries. Even if you have a tube mod with no battery in it, they are considering that an electronic smoking device, and it would be banned from your checked bag, and it would be banned from your carry-on. 
It is ridiculous. It'll take you two seconds. If this amendment is accepted, vapors will be forced to leave their batteries and devices at home or surrender them to the TSA at checkpoints before being allowed through security. This would impose a completely unwarranted and unnecessary expense on travelers who vape. Beyond the issue of flying with vapor products, the spirit of amendment prohibiting lithium-ion batteries on board commercial flights might as well include a ban on carrying any portable electronic device in checked or carry on baggage could you imagine if they banned travel with laptops or cell phones absolutely that is ridiculous and you know I, I, who posted this gregory Connolly originally posted this and people in the comments were just going bananas like well if they ban vape stuff then they might as well you know ban cell phones and laptops too and it's like yeah i mean yeah, and maybe instead of trying to find loopholes in this, just do the call to action and stand against it so we don't have to find loopholes in it, right? In fact, Greg posted a great picture that said, if you guys could just stop worrying about loopholes and just do the call to action, that would be great. So please, I am begging you, if you've never ever done anything for advocacy in your entire life, do this one thing. Just just do this one thing, please, for me, for all your fellow vapors, to show Blumenthal what a idiot that he is. And I was going to use a much harsher expletive, but really, I think idiot describes him perfectly. So, wow, we've already done a little bit of advocacy. Uh, we did a little bit of a California update. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I actually need to be talking about in here. You know, I think we're doing pretty good. Let's do a quick, uh, let's do a quick what I've been vaping. So I've got some stuff here. What I've been vaping. Uh, no big deal. No real surprises here. What do you, what do you, what are you surprised? This is the noisy cricket. This is the dot mod version two. This is a Jess Marie DHD cap on top. This is my buddy John's bakery banana flavor. Yeah, it's something I constantly always have at my desk. I'm always vaping it. It's just one of my most favorite vapes in the world. And please, please, people with the noisy crickets, stop. Stop building so low. I get emails constantly. Is a .15 okay to use on the noisy cricket? Fuck. No, it's not. Don't do that. Build like .4 and up. Just that's all you need to remember. Point four and up, and you'll be good to go. P this guy was emailing me saying, uh, you know, I've got a build on my noisy cricket, and it's constantly tasting dry. It's constantly tasting burnt. And I'm like, what build do you have on it? And mind you, this is a lot of people do this. A lot of people have emailed me this. It's like, oh, well, it's a point two. And I'm like, what, what do you know? What do you stop? No, don't do that. Do not do that at all. When using the Noisy Cricket, build high and always make sure your battery wraps are intact. If you treat it right and clean it and build correctly, it is going to be an amazing vape. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Well, we might as well knock these out together. I, uh, I'm i a big fan of the Axis Vapes M17. In fact, I might be just, I'm gonna do my review for these next week because I have been using them just nonstop. And when I say them, I alluded last week. Remember I have this green one, this green Axis Vapes M17, DNA 200 mod, Sub-Zero RDA on top, dot mod drip tip. This is Rainbow Sherbet in the dark. Literally, this is my daily banger. I, I vape this. Constantly, I vaped just, you know, hundreds of mils of sherbet in the dark through this RDA. Great, great vape. It's my go-to reliable vape. Oh, God. It is so good. So, I liked it so much. Look at that. Look at the beauty on this. You can't, you cannot appreciate this. Hang on. I got to zoom in so that you can see all the color amazingness happening here. You see this? Do you see what's going on here? It's wood on the bottom and it goes into this acrylic that looks like fucking space demons or something. Like there's some silver here, some black. There's purple and blue and green and it's it's all swirly on the front. There's a big chunk of blue right here. 
some more that looks like an eyeball right there to me like a like a it looks like a dog head like that's the eye and then that's the dog nose and then that's the dog mouth with like a yellow spot right here in the wood and oh it's just it's so freaking good it says clouds bro clouds dot mod petri version 2 black uh black dot mod petri version 2 this is a purple dot mod drip tip to kind of go along with the dark purples that are going on in here it's just uh oh it's it's just so cool and best of all i'm not sure if you're gonna see this do you see the serial number on it that's right this is axis vapes m17 number six 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 bought this from a fella on facebook okay i didn't buy this off the site guy named brian on facebook oh, it's so pretty god i lo i love love the way this mod looks it has not left my hand so like I said, a guy, uh, a, a fella on Facebook uh, posted in some random vape group that I don't, I'm, you know, I'm a member of like 400 plus vape groups on Facebook. And so I see them all in my newsfeed and a guy named Brian, he posted and he said, hey, I just bought this Axis Vapes M17. It just arrived at my house. I love it. I saw a better one on the website. So I bought it and I want to sell this one. And so I instantly contacted him and said, are you serious? Because I would like to buy that from you. It just looked so beautiful in the pictures. And he's like, absolutely. So I PayPal'd him the money and he shipped it really quickly right away. And it's, it's awesome, Brian. Thank you. Thank you for buying this and then selling it because otherwise I wouldn't have got it and I would not have got number triple six, which is never ever going to happen again. And oh man, that makes me so excited. Like I said, this is a dot mod Petri version two purple dot mod drip tip. The juice I have in here is Moo E liquids, uh, vanilla almond milk. If you watched my UK vape jam travel blog, I was kind of gushing a little bit that their milks don't taste like cheese. Let me make sure this is wet before I take a big old toot on it. But yeah, their juices are great and uh, really flavorful and creamy. The van vanilla almond milk honestly isn't my favorite. I think it's their biggest seller. I like the banana much more, which we're going to talk about in just one second. But I love it. I love this mod. I can't help it. And one thing I noticed, and, you know, I'm sure this is different on every DNA 200. My green Axis Vapes, the DNA 200 screen is, like, slightly yellow. It's like blue yellow and on my newest M17 it's a very bright like blue color. It's very interesting. The colors are just different on the screens. It doesn't bother me. It's just something I noticed. So, moving forward, I have a Titan. This is uh, you know, a DPU box, dual parallel unregulated box. I have a Twisted Messes version 2 atomizer on top and I've been vaping this from Mona's Pantry and it's a it's, it's called Cloudy Lemonade, okay? And I tasted this at Vape Jam and just basically was like blown away. I'm like, this is an amazing lemonade flavor, right? And so I got a bottle, I get home, I load it up in this RDA yesterday and I'm like, huh, it's not quite as good as I remember it. They have a pink lemonade flavor, which I love, but the Cloudy Lemonade, Cloudy Lemonade, it's it's good. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm enjoying vaping it, but I get a little bit of like lemon pledge flavor from it, which is weird. Could be the build, could be the wattage. I don't know. Maybe this juice, you know, different wattages bring out different characteristics in juice. Like uh, the Epiclouds Cardamator Crush does much better at lower wattages than higher wattages. And this could be one of those juices that does better at a little bit lower of a wattage as it stands this is a 0 0.09 on an unregulated so it's up into the hundred plus watts it's it's a good vape it's nice and flavorful but i do get a little bit of uh like lemon pledgy flavor from this juice right now and i don't know if that's because it tastes like it has a touch of like culotta in it like that cooling sensation in it um anyway last thing i've been vaping this is the v god minikin no gaps in this door boy let me tell you been really really enjoying this for some reason i've always loved the feel of the minikin but i wasn't pumped on those gaps at the top and bottom thankfully 
This one is gapless. I have a Sub-Zero, Black Sub-Zero RDA on here. I've got another Moo e-liquids juice, which is the banana milk. This is topped off with a uh, with a crispy cap as well. Uh, all I have in here is it's a series type build. Not really. It's a dual fuse clapped in at 0.2 ohms. I have it set to 80 watts, and this has been easily one of my favorite vapes that I've had. Uh, out of all of these setups, no, okay, maybe not. Both of these Sub-Zeros are like my favorite right now. I use that M17 with the Sub-Zero and I use my Minikin V-God with the Sub-Zero as well. This banana milk is nice, rich, creamy, creamy, milky banana flavor. Oh Lord, oh Lord, it is so good. So what are we gonna do after what I've been vaping? Uh, I've just been vaping a lot, I'm feeling thirsty. Let's go over there, that's right, the beer section. Let's taste some freaking beer. You know, I haven't done uh, like a stormtrooper gag in a while. I used to start off the beer segments like having to do something with a stormtrooper. Like I'd put on the helmet or I'd burp or you know, I don't know, something to do with the stormtrooper. So I just haven't done it in a while. I need to get creative and do another stormtrooper gag. You know what I did buy? I bought a Batman. <laughs> I went to Target one day and I was supposed to get paper towels, Windex, something else don't remember and i ended up buying a batman <laughs> because it was like nine bucks and look at this it is a big this is a big batman and uh it's cool maybe i'll just leave him here the whole beer segment and he can talk like ben affleck and go tell me do you bleed i like the batman versus superman movie i don't think it was amazing or like perfect or anything but i thoroughly enjoyed uh watching it and so of course i had to pick up bat fleck in the bat suit batman toy because why not his arms go up maybe he could hold a mod or something and i can post it on instagram i don't know but yeah i, I bought a batman because i'm a grown ass child <laughs> no you grow up so batman now joins the hall of fame with uh sean from sean of the dead uh fn2737 whatever stormtrooper guy and then my helmets and bb8 and all that fun stuff back there. But what I have is beer. What we got is beer right now. So on the last episode of the podcast, we did uh, our top five favorite things. So we did uh, beer and food and cocktails and songs and movies and all this fun stuff. It was a very non vapey related show, but it was still very, very fun. And one of uh, Ruby Roo's favorite beers was this little guy right here. This is Duval. And... I saw it at the that the uh, at the Bevmo, and I was like, you know what? I haven't had that in a really long time. Ruby just said it was one of her top five favorite beers of all time. So you know what? We're gonna drink some Duval. So let's pour this. I'm gonna go into a traditional, you know, uh, Belgian tulip style glass. Duval is a light, light beer. It's not like uh, a dark beer. Wow, look at that head. It's got sort of a translucent like can't quite see through it sort of uh color look at that head good lord i need to learn how to pour beers i've never ever been good at that and i thought i was doing a really good job up until when i saw that head but anyway clicking over to the beer advocate site this has a 95 and 100 percent world class rating brewed by <laughs> A Belgian name that I can't pronounce. It's uh, available year round and they have no notes. I wonder if there's like an official website or something like that. Yeah, you can go to duvel.com. D U V E L.com. Yes, I am of legal drinking age and I am in USA. Fantastic. Oh, they did a Duval triple hop. I would love a Duval like. Uh, Tulip style glass. Oh, wow. It says, Welcome Firestone Walker to the Duval family. Duval just became a shareholder of the Firestone Walker Brewing Company in Paso Robles, California. I love Firestone Walker. Oh, I love their beers. Anyway, I'll link to Duval's uh, you know, website as well as their beer advocate site. Anyway, it's been a while since I've had this. I remember it being very, very good. This is an 8.5% alcohol, so time to drink through that head like a man. I'm already thinking in my head what juice could I pair with this right now? Oh, 
oh, it's so good. It's so refreshing and vibrant and crisp. It's got nice, like, citrusy, hoppy Belgian characteristics. It's just so clean. It's so easy to drink. And it's just, ah, oh, holy crap. Duval, you were right. You Whoa, watch out. Watch out. Wow, drink through that head like a man, Ruby Roo. I freaking dare you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. That is a good beer. That is such a good beer. Like I said, it's bright and clean and citrusy. It's got a very, very clean finish. It's just an easy drinking beer. I could drink uh, I could drink Duval over and over again. What I'm going to do is pair it with this lemonade. With this Mona's Pantry Cloudy Lemonade, I have a feeling it's just going to go really, really well together. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. That is a rad, rad pairing. That is a rad pairing. This is a great, it's, it's a citrusy, it, you know, it's a lemonade juice, so it's like a lemony citrus. This would pair well with like any lighter golden Belgian or Hefeweizen style beers, Hogarden, Duval. It would be amazing. Uh, this is a great pairing. I am enjoying it so much. I would like to do it again, please. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> Next time we do a top five show, uh, dang, Ruby, I might have to, uh, I might have to reconsider because this Duval is just hitting the spot like you can't imagine. Just so good. If you are a fan of lighter, you know, ooh, ooh pardon me, Robin, <clears throat> what's in the news over there? Sorry. Well, okay. This is getting gross. <sighs> sorry. Sorry, Sheik. Sorry, Sheik. But if you're a fan of like lighter golden ales or like Hefeweizen style lighter beers, this Duval is, uh, is champ. This might be the lightest beer that I actually truly, really, truly, truly enjoy. Mm, 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 mm. It's so good. Thank you, Duval. And thank you, uh, shout out. Thank you to Ruby for, uh, bringing that back up. I hadn't had it in a long time and I'm glad I did. So what we're going to do after we taste some beer, we got a couple shout outs to do. It is shout out time. So yeah, I got a couple of shout outs to do. There was a girl on uh, YouTube. Uh, she left a comment, Emily. Uh, she just said, hey, Grim, my name is Emily, and my husband is such a huge fan. He watches everything you do. He has been camping uh, for several years now. I'm mean, assuming that she meant vaping, but it might have got re you know autocorrected to camping, which is better than the alternatives. Uh, he is just so passionate about the vape scene. He has had my support the whole time. It would mean the world to both of us if you could get him an amazing shout out by his favorite vape reviewer. Thank you so much. And then that's it. And then a couple minutes later, she left another comment that says, lol, his name is Jonathan. So absolutely, Emily, Jonathan, you are both shouted out. Thank you so much for the support. I also want to give a real quick shout out to one of my regular commenters and viewers of my videos. He goes by the name Wolfman1949, and he's just a really nice dude. He's always positive. He's always got something to say, whether it's, you know, you know, uh, uh, positive or negative, but he's, he's just, he's just a really good guy. And he always comments on my videos and he just seems like a cool dude. He's got a big white beard uh, and he just, I don't know. He's just always, I always like seeing Mr. Wolfman 1949's comments because he just seems like a good dude. And even if he has nothing to say, you know, about whatever device I'm reviewing or about anything in the vlog, he, he, he always just says, you know, Hey, thanks for the video. Thanks for taking the time. And I think that's awesome. I love, I, I like it. I like, I love nice people. And so he's always been just a, just a super cool dude. So I have a, an email here and it's for somebody. So I'm just going to read it. And this is, um, and this is a little bit of an intense email, and I got a little bit choked up when I was reading it the first time. But uh, a fellow named Ross writes to me, and he says, Hi, Nick. My name is Ross, and I'm the manager of Carolina Vapor Mill in Powdersville, South Carolina. The reason I'm writing to you is that on this, is on this last Easter Sunday, we lost a very dear friend of ours named Josh. He worked for us for a while, and he very quickly became family. He had recently left our shop to a... Pr pr uh, 
pursue a career in truck driving in order to better provide for his fiance and his two daughters. Uh, even though he left the shop, he had not left our hearts and he still hung out regularly. He was one of the kindest souls you could ever meet. Uh, and he could never, <laughs> I'm sorry. He was one of the kindest souls that you could ever meet. Often in the shop, we played our, uh, we played your reviews on our TV. Josh and myself are huge fans of your honesty in each review. We often watch you and learn about new products that we just received in the store. Like yourself, Josh and I shared a love of all things metal. His death left a massive hole in our hearts uh, and of many of us here in the upstate area and crushed those closest to him. If you wouldn't mind, we have been doing a hashtag clouds for Josh movement on our local Facebook page as his coworker and more importantly, his friend. It would mean so much for you to throw up a cloud for Josh. I will attach a picture for of Josh and his oldest daughter, Zoe. Uh, may craft beer flow like rivers and metal fill the skies. And yeah, there's a, you know, uh, there's a picture of Josh and his youngest uh, daughter. And it's just, I mean, that's, in that's incredibly heartbreaking. So you know what? Absolutely. Uh, let's do some hashtag clouds for Josh right now. That's for you, Josh. Um, Terrible. I mean, terribly heartbreaking. I hope that, uh, I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I don't even know what to say. It's just incredibly heartbreaking. And, uh, I hope that cloud did, did you justice, Josh. I'm assuming that you had, uh, way, way better clouds than me, but absolutely, uh, Ross, Carolina Verpermill, and especially Josh, uh, your fiance and your kids, you are absolutely shouted out. It's literally the least that I can do. Um, I want to see everybody blowing some clouds for Josh. Hashtag clouds for Josh. So I got another email here from Aaron and we might as well keep this going. I watch your videos like my wife. <laughs> anyway, he writes to me and says, Hey Nick, my name is Aaron. I watch your videos like my wife watches the housewives of Beverly Hills. Oftentimes we lay together on our couch and I watch vape videos while she watches reality TV. Anyway, I have been a vapor for going on two years and I'm trying to transition my wife to vaping due to her already battling cancer. My wife's name is Becky. She is 34 and battling two types of cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and chronic lymphatic leukemia. I basically go to work, come home, and take care of her. My wife is my rock. She supports my every decision, and most of all, although she's going through so much, she is the strongest, most positive person that I know. She's my soulmate, and she's the perfect wife. I can only wish for a man to find a wife as great as mine. So if you get a chance, could you give her a shout out? I don't know how, uh, you don't know how much it would mean to her, but I know how much it would mean to me. And while it might just be enough of a boost to get her into vaping, uh, thank you for taking time to read this email, and thanks for all you do to promote life. Absolutely. Uh, Aaron, you are shouted out. Uh, your wife, Becky? Yes, Becky. Wow, that would have been really embarrassing if I had forgotten your wife's name. Aaron, you are shouted out. Becky, you are definitely shouted out. Uh, keep your chin up and stay strong. It sounds like uh, you have a husband who really loves you, and... It's just, wow, both of these emails really, really get me right in the feels. So let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's do something a little bit more upbeat. Uh, Chase. Chase writes to me and says, Greetings, Nick. My name is Chase from Scottsdale, Arizona. I had the opportunity to meet you at the Weber Dynasty Expo in October last year. I was an occasional smoker for some time, and your videos not only helped me kick the habit, but they also taught me everything I know about vaping today. I admire the work you do in advocacy, and thank you for the time and effort you put into this community. Absolutely. My pleasure, sir. On February 8th, I will be shipping out uh, to Camp Pendleton in San Diego, California for Marine Corps basic training. I have been told left and right that the first few weeks are absolute hell. Any motivation from home, friends, etc. helps immensely, and nothing would be more motivating than receiving a shout out from you in my final days of civilian life. Thank you for reading this, and please wish me luck in the 12 weeks of pain coming my way. Absolutely Good luck to you. Good luck to you, Sir Chase, there in basic training for the Marine Corps. Now, if my calculations are correct, let's see, you sent me that on January 28th. Let's see, no, 
That's four. That's eight. Oh, you're, you might be done. You might be done with basing training now. Anyway, I hope you see this shout out and I hope that it, uh, I hope that you got through your basic training just, you know, with flying colors, sir. So, uh, I've got, uh, I've got one more shout out to do now. What kind of uh, person would I be if I didn't shout out my lady friends, YouTube. Um, she started a YouTube called Casey Hearts Cocktails. You can check out her website, CaseyHeartsCocktails.com. And all she does, let's head over there now, CaseyHeartsCocktails.com. What she does is she does these quick little like, uh, let's see, how long is this one? How long are you? 42 seconds long. She does like quick how to make cocktail videos. And these are like Cocktails, cocktails, not like rum and cokes. These are like a champagne cocktail or a, what was the other ones she did? Gimlets and this, that, and the other, like actual, actual cocktails. And um, she's incredibly talented when it comes to this kind of stuff, like doing cocktails. They're all freaking delicious. And luckily for me, I get to drink and taste everything that she makes. So yeah, of course, what kind of person would I be if I didn't shout her out? I'll put a link down in the description to her YouTube as well as Casey Hart's cocktails.com. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's what I got for shout outs this week. Um, I'm going to try to keep it a little bit shorter just because we have a lot of first impressions to do. And that's actually what we're going to do right now. <clears throat> All right, so first things first, a lot of people. I posted this picture on Instagram of the Mason RDA. They come in 24, 34, and then like a big 44, 40 millimeter guy. Now, these are big ass atomizers, and a lot of people keep asking me how it's been going, what builds have I put on it, this, that, and the other. I have not been able to vape this RDA at all because the the, the screws in the post holes are just razors. Like they are sharp and flat. Every build I've put in here, including like triple core fused Clapton's, like big, thick, girthy, beefy wires, 20 gauge, uh, you know, 20 gauge Nihachrome, uh, 20 gauge Canthal, it just cuts the wires. I can't tighten it down without it instantly cutting right through my wires. It's driving me insane. So someday when I get a build on this RDA, I'll be able to vape it. But as it stands, I've had it for about two weeks now. I've tried to put multiple builds on it. Cannot, cannot put any builds on it because it constantly is clipping my wires. Now, another thing I want to talk about real fast that isn't necessarily a first impressions. Well, it's kind of a first impressions, although I'm not going to be vaping it. I got this new Rafale X atomizer rda from you well and it's not a bad looking little atomizer it's this little stainless steel atomizer it's got a black uh, drip tip on top which actually goes into the body of the atomizer and it has these little baffles in here to prevent spit back which i mean come on we all know it doesn't really work very well now i don't know if you well understands really or maybe I don't understand really how electricity works. So what they've done on the inside here, and much like the Mason RDA, this is a wire clipper like crazy. It just cuts wires that I've put in it. So far, I've tried regular 24 gauge Canthal. I've tried uh, double twisted 26 gauge Canthal and triple twisted 26 gauge Canthal. And each time it has cut my wires, clipped my leads when I'm screwing those screws down. Now they have over here is the negative post. And then way on the other side is the positive post, right? And then in the middle screwed to the positive post is what they're calling something. What are they calling that? It's called the neutral post, right? That doesn't make any sense, but it comes with these ridiculous instructions. And that's, you know, right there, that's what you want to see on an RDA, uh, you know, instruction booklet is divisional math. That's what you want to see. So they say 
that using a flathead screwdriver, you can unscrew the positive post in the bottom of the 510, and using the Phillips head screwdriver, you can disassemble the positive and neutral post in here. For some reason, you can take it all apart, and they tell you how to do that, but I haven't found out, I haven't figured out why you would ever actually need to do that. So, coil instructions, and I've been studying this and I still can't get a build in there that will actually fire unless I go from the far positive to the far negative. That is how electricity works, positive to negative, right? You span the distance between the two with a coil and that's how you heat up your coils. It has this neutral post in the middle which has two holes in it so it looks like a four post RDA but if you go from the positive to the neutral, does not fire. If you go from the negative to the neutral, it does not fire. I can't figure out the purpose of the neutral post on here. And the neutral post is surrounded by insulation, but it's screwed into the positive post. It is boggling my mind at how this actually works. So they basically go on to say there are three basic connect modes, serial, I think they mean series, parallel, and serialized parallel build, which I've never heard of before. I think UL's just making stuff up now. So R equals R1 plus R2. For example, R1 equals 0.5 ohms, R2 equals 0.5 ohms, R equals one ohm. So in serial mode, you can build a 0.5 ohm coil and a 0.5 ohm coil, and it will double the resistance instead of splitting the resistance. What? That doesn't make any sense in my brain. That goes against everything I've learned about Ohm's Law my entire vaping career. Parallel mode. R equals R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. For example, R1 equals 0.5 ohms, R2 equals 0.5 ohms, R equals 0.25 ohms. So that is splitting it when you go from the far positive to the far negative. That's regular style building. And then the last one they have on here is serialized parallel mode. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. R equals R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus R3 times R4 over R3 plus R4. For example, R1 is 0.5 ohms, R2 is 0.5 ohms, R3 is 0.5 ohms, and R4 is 0.5 ohms, which makes the resistance 0.5 ohms. Quad coils give you the best results for flavor as well as cloud production. You get four coils with a lower resistance per coil. So apart from this clipping things constantly, I have not been able to get a stable build in this at all. I've tried the serial mode and I've tried the parallel mode and it was only when I built a giant like 17 wrap coil in here from the positive to the negative that I was able to get anything to fire. I don't know. You know what, you well, I really hope this works out. Uh, I like, actually really like the styling of this atomizer. It's a little bit indestructibly in that there's the, the negative and the positives are wide and that's how you adjust your airflow. So you, you put the three holes over on those and then you end up with one hole in front of your coils. Alternatively, you can flip it so the one hole is against the posts and then you get three holes against your coils really nice open airflow and I even think it looks cool with the stupid anti spit back thing in there except you can't really drip through it maybe it's a little bit louder but I'll be looking forward to the day when I can actually get a build in there as it stands weird complicated math is not not something you want to see on the instruction booklet for your atomizer so moving forward to something I can actually actually vape this just arrived from uh, District 5, and this is the Goon RDA from Mr. Blue-Eyed Goon. He's a builder guy, and he released an RDA. And if you go on Instagram and you look at pictures of this RDA, it looks like a strange RDA. And I'm looking at him on Instagram, and I'm fascinated. I'm like, 
I wonder how that works. And so on each side, you have a positive and a negative, right? So the positive and the negatives are flat. And then there's a plate on top with two screws that hold down each plate, right? So instead of going through post holes, you're basically putting your leads in on both sides and then screwing down as evenly as you can these two screws to like lock down the negative plate and then lock down the positive plate. Let me tell you that it was way more difficult to build than I thought it would be. I thought it would be weird but simple. It's actually weird but difficult. And I'm sure over time when you build with it and build with it and build with it, it gets easier and easier and easier. So far, the best way I've found to do it is to take off one set of screws and one plate completely and then loosen the other one flip it upside down so that the plate slides down so you have a place to put your lead put your leads of both coils in upside down right where they need to go flip it back right side up screw down those screws to secure either your positive or negative side i don't know if this is making sense in your head because you kind of have to see the rda to do this and then I used my graduated tool to like push the coil over where it needed to be and then I clipped my other negative leads and placed them on the plate where they needed to go. Then I put the plate on the screws, set it down, and then screwed basically evenly those two screws down so that everything was secure. I'm just going to, well here, I've juiced it up. Let me vape some of this juice off and I'll show you a, you know, a close up of the deck. I kind of prefer rocking this with two airflow slots open. It's got an internal adjustable airflow, one, two, or three slots, one, two, or three holes rather I should say the atomizer itself is 24 millimeters around yeah so it's it's been it's been actually a pretty nice vape now this literally just arrived today so I've only been able to vape on it for I mean a total of like maybe maybe 10 or 15 minutes this is poor house butterbean the flavor is quite nice but like i said i'm going to try to vape some of this juice off so i can like sh maybe show you a little bit of a close up of the build deck so you can kind of do you see the build deck right there do you see how there's a positive and a negative and then there's like flat plates on the top and i noticed that on my negative plate i screwed it down really snug. These are some MTurk alien wire builds in here and it bowed that plate. Like that plate over here, in fact, both of them are like slightly bowed up in the middle. I feel like over time that those are going to get permanently bent. I'm not 100% sure. So this was made by 528 Custom Vapes. I'm not 100% sure what those plates are made out of, but do you see how there's two screws over here and two screws over here? You kind of have to screw those down evenly. So what I did was I got them both snug and then I went back and forth like one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn to like lower that plate down onto those coils evenly. It's, I don't know, it's a little bit of a peculiar design. I, I, I would like to pick Blue Eyed Goon's brain and see why he decided to go this way if he wanted to make it different just for the sake of being different or if he really thinks this is easier to build on. I found it quite cumbersome, but you know what? I'm not a builder guy, so yeah, that's the deck. For a 24 millimeter atomizer, the flavor on it is quite nice and uh, yeah, the airflow on it is quite nice as well. Like with all my first impressions, I'm gonna spend, wow, way much more time with this RDA. I'm gonna field test it, you know, <clears throat> pardon me, out in the real world. I might drop it a few times. I'm gonna try to put some more simple builds in here, I guess. You know, I wanna try it with like a 22 gauge, just like a 22 gauge, 10 wrap or something like that, just to see how that goes in. The aliens were a little cumbersome, a little fiddly to install, but the vape I'm getting from it is great. They came out to 0.12 ohms. I have it at 81 watts, and uh, yeah, the vape's great.
And that blue-eyed goon is sitting on what I'm going to talk about next. So I posted a picture of this on Instagram. This comes from Mod Crate, not Vapor Crate, like I said on Instagram, which I quickly fixed. Mod Crate. This is the Silo 2000, and it's not on their website that I can find. But what they do make is the Silo 1300, which, as you can kind of guess, is a 1300 milliamp hour battery. So they make the Silo 950, which is a 950, which is a 950 milliamp hour battery. They make the Silo 130, which is a 1300 milliamp hour battery. And then they make the Silo 2000, which is a DNA 200, 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's kind of a bigger, beefier mod. It feels very super substantial, very heavy. This is machined out of aluminum, but it feels very substantial. It feels like a snow wolf. It feel, almost feels as heavy as that like 44 mod that Joe Litt did. It feels super, super heavy. The buttons are plastic, so there's no, I mean, no rattling around. It feels just, oh, just beefy and strong in your hands. And you know what? The battery life of a 2000 milliamp hour battery inside of a DNA 200 just lasts a good long time. I vaped this all day and all night. I mean, up until I went to bed yesterday and I was down to like, I don't know, 40%. Like I heavily, heavily vaped this. It's just nice to have a high wattage device that has a nice long battery life in it. I don't know. It's really kind of cool. I mean, the mod itself, it's not, doesn't look like anything special. It's just, as Phil would say, kind of like a deck of cards, a little bit bigger, but very substantial. It's got silo 2000 kind of engraved, like deeply engraved into the side here. I'm not going to sure, sure that's going to show up on camera, but spring loaded 510 on top. I've had uh, a really great time with this. It's 24 millimeters or like 27 millimeters across. So a nice 24 millimeter atomizer fits on here really well. I think I'm going to take this with me to vape bash. I think I'm going to take this and the two axis vapes and then like, that's it. Call it good. Just three DNA 200s all with lipo packs done. Good to go for a vape meet. And I'm going to see how it goes. The 510 connection is nice. It's okay. Well, now I can't unscrew this. There it is. There it is. It's nice. And it's got some like, it's very slightly raised and it has like traditional style airflow slots cut into it and you know, that go all the way through. So for some reason, if you were using, I don't know, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head that uses bottom airflow anymore. The Goblin mini version two, uh, the Calyx, the Calyx version two, things that use bottom style airflow, you would be able to use it on this because it's not going to cut any, you know, sort of airflow off. In fact, it might improve the airflow of the Goblin Mini version two. But uh, let me put this blue eyed goon back on here. But uh, yeah, so far it's just been really, really great to use. I love the weight and feel of a very substantial mod. And you know what, two thousand ma or milliamp hour. I mean. That's tough to beat with a lipo pack and a DNA 200. That is the same coil, 81 watts. It's, you know, like Ruby said, you can taste the signal. It's a very nice, flat, just powerful signal. Okay, come on, new coil, yes, good Lord. So yeah, that's the uh, Silo 2000. What should we do next? Let's talk about Matt's, let's talk about the Theorem, okay? Let's talk about this little Theorem tank right now. Now, this is my first like drip tank and I'm really getting used to it. It's a different experience to me because you know, there's tanks, there's RTAs, there's sub ohm tanks, there's things like the Griffin or the Aroma Miser and this, that, and the other. And then there's like sub ohm tanks like the Arctic and the Heracles. This is kind of like a Genesis drip tank. I mean, that's the best way that I can describe it. I got it on the new Sean Hooligan SX350J version two mod. He threw my logo on there and that looks, uh, that looks pretty boss. It's been, it's been a weird vape. So I basically just got this a few days ago. I installed the notch coil in it and it, the notch coil comes pre wicked. So 
The notch coil is big. It is five millimeters around. So it is a big, big coil. And because it is a big, big diameter, you have to put a lot of cotton in there because you want cotton touching the inside of this notch coil. And then those wicks go down into your tank and I cut them off so they're just hovering above the deck. Now this is, I assumed I would use this like a dripper. You know what I mean? I figured I would just drip a bunch of juice in here. Let's try it out. Sure, drip a bunch of juice in there and the excess juice would kinda go down into the tank. But that's not really the case with the notch coil. The cotton kind of fills up the, the, the distance between the deck and then the rest of the tank down here, this little like one and a half mil tank. You kind of have to treat it like a tank. So I've been popping it off like this, taking the whole top off, and then what you get in here is a little hole. And then I put my unicorn bottle in there and I go bleh. And that's it. And now the tank is full. So whenever I use this, I'm still carrying around a bottle of juice. I would never just leave the house with this and assume that it would be enough juice to get me through the day. The airflow comes from the top and the bottom. So this is going to be difficult to see right now. And you won't really be able to appreciate it until we do a full up close. But there's an Aeola style airflow over here that goes in and down to your coil. And then on the other side, there's like an actual air tunnel where your air goes in and then right down to the deck and then over the bottom of your coils. It makes for some really nice swooshy airflow, some really fantastic flavor, and some decently good performance. I've noticed that I can't run this notch coil very high at all. So this is a .28 ohm notch coil on here and i have it sitting at about 53 watts with the preheat on this at standard on the sx350j you can choose eco or soft or standard or powerful or powerful plus and that just determines how quick your ramp up time is so i have this set to standard 53 watts 0.28 ohms it's giving me 3.8 volts which would basically be like running this on the titan like an unregulated just 3.7 volt device performance is pretty good the flavor though is really nice um this is yig in here and you know like i always say i've been vaping yig for years now i mean daily years now i know exactly what it's supposed to taste like this tastes like the idealized version of yig it just tastes so good the flavor is very very nice Now, what I want to do is get this notch coil out of here, and I want to build a smaller two and a half to three millimeter fuse clapton and put that in here, and then run some, some smaller wicks down so that those wick holes that go down to the tank aren't getting so choked off. So look, I plan on spending a lot of time with this tank. I know a few people have done reviews for it already. That's great. I want to spend more time with it. I will say I've already broken one of the glasses on here. Um, I don't know why I decided to do this, but the whole thing is held together by O-rings. The tank is held onto the base by O-rings, and the top is held onto the tank by O-rings. There's one O-ring on top, so you can kind of pop that off, but I always hold my finger on the glass whenever I'm taking on and off the top. I'm worried about grabbing this, pulling off the tank and ending up with a lap full of juice if my tank is full. So I screwed this down onto a mod and I could not unscrew it. I just kept turning the glass around the O-rings and I'm like, motherfucker. So I have a full tank in here. So I'm like, how do I get this off? So brilliant Nick, I take my rubber tipped pliers and I gently grab it and I twist it and I just shatter the glass and glass shattered and juice went everywhere. And I was like, oh, mother effing da. Yeah. Thankfully, it does come with a replacement glass. So that's what's on here is the replacement glass. 
As far as the quality of vape goes that I get from this, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a nice flavor. I don't know how I feel about it yet. The jury's out right now. I This is like a weird in-between. It's not quite a tank, right? But it's not quite a dripper either. It's just this kind of like weird in-between state. I'm really enjoying the flavor. I haven't left the house with it yet because I'm worried about the strength of those O-rings. Additionally, if you leave the house with it, you're going to have to carry a bottle of juice with you because you will be filling this tank constantly, especially if you're, you know, consistently vaping it like a lot, like chain vaping it. Yeah, you're going to need to fill up this tank a lot. The airflow feels swooshy, a little bit turbulent. I would have liked a smoother airflow, but the trade-off from all of this is that the coil is very close to the drip tip, and it's a very reduced chamber on the inside, so you're going to get some really nice flavor. Interesting. It's an interesting little thing. So like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way more time here with this little theorem uh, drip tank. I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to put a couple builds in here. I'm going to ditch this notch coil because it's a cool idea, man, and it vapes great. I feel like it's not ideal for this tank because the tank is so small. And it's a small little chamber with a small little area, small little tank, small little airflow. And then you have this big fucking five millimeter notch coil in there. I don't feel like it's ideal for this tank. I want to throw a fuse Clapton in here on a much smaller diameter and re-wick it and see how that goes. In fact, I might do that over the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours. But so far, it's been fine. Like I said, with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way more way more time with this tank before I feel comfortable giving it like a full review. I want to really put it through its paces. So the second to last thing that I want to talk about is this little guy right here. This is the Cuboid Mini, okay? Now I've had this for, I don't know, three or four days now, and I've truly and honestly been quite impressed with it. I've been running temp control on this. And if you know me and if you watch my videos and me and Ruby did a whole thing on the podcast about temp control, I am not, 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 not a fan of temp control. But I threw the stainless steel 316 coil head in this tank. I've got it set to 400 degrees, 80 watts, 0.26 ohms. It's been a really nice vape. This is the same airflow as the full size Cubis tank, so it's nice and open and flowy and swooshy, and it comes in from the top and then goes down to your coil head and then up into your mouth. This is a square tank on here on top of this tiny little cuboid mini. This is the silver one, but they come in silver and gold and full black and then like gunmetal, I think. I haven't got any weird gurgliness or anything from this tank. It's just been overall a really good experience. Nice flavor, nice vapor in a really small, I mean, look how small this little package is right here. It's, uh, pfft, it's been good. Now it still does that dumb temp control thing like all temp control does. And this is just something that temp control does is it ramps up great. And then it goes, like, oh, sorry, we're going to let's lower that wattage for you. And the whole time I'm like, yeah, this is great. No, no, keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. It just has that temp control drop off. But this is the stainless steel uh, notch coil in here. 400 degrees. I have it set to 80 watts. It's a 0.26 ohms. Let's give it a vape. Yep. Temp control, it does does that thing where it goes up and down. But, I mean, you saw the performance. It's great. That first, like, one second of the toot is really nice and powerful, warm vapor in your mouth. The airflow is great. Like I said, I haven't got any gurgliness or leakiness from this. And you fill it up the same way as you do the AIO. You unscrew the top just like this. And then that's your coil head right there. And I'm going to hold it over the tank so it doesn't drip everywhere and then you bleh, you fill your juice in there right up to the line and then you pop this back down in there screw it down and it feels like a you know like a childproof sort of 
like a childproof cap. Like you can't, you have to like, oh no. Okay, so it's not like the AIO. It's much more like the original Cubis tank. Anyway, open that airflow all the way up. Uh, it does come with its own drip tip and other drip tips kind of just look weird on here. So I've been using it with its own drip tip. But you know what? I've been reaching for this a lot on my desk like it's not in regular rotation just quite yet but and i'm sitting here answering emails and answering comments and stuff like that i'm reaching for this quite a bit because i actually really like the vape i'm getting from it i think maybe it's that notch coil in the coil head i don't know it's just it's just a good vape Now, believe it or not, this little square tank up here has a capacity of five mils, and it is just a normal 510 connection on top. It's just a square tank that happens to line up perfectly when you, whoops, when you screw it down onto this 510 threading, when it's all the way tight, it's going to be tight right there, Doot. it just, that's it. It just lines up perfectly with the rest of the mod. And you can unscrew it. You could, if you wanted to for some reason, use this tank on another mod. It's got a regular 510 on there. Additionally, this Cuboid Mini now feels even smaller, and you can put something else on this 510. Look at that little Goblin Mini version 2. Let's set the wattage to 47 watts. It's a 0.3 ohm coil, 3.7 volts. This is going to be a good... Look at this. It's a good vape, and it's a little compact little guy it's not like you know whoops wow that almost could have been really bad it's not like nugget sized but it's a fun fun little little device yeah i mean dude that is a great freaking vape right there so let's look at this the size 35.5 something by 22.5 something by 124.5 something millimeters i guess they're not specific on here they say the battery capacity is 2400 ma or milliamp hour which seems high i mean that seems like a lot for this tiny dinky little thing five mil tank uh the output mode is temperature control for titanium nickel and 316 stainless steel it's got variable wattage it's got a bypass mode and it has custom tcrs uh in temperature mode it can fire down to a 0.05 to 1.5 in variable wattage mode it can fire down to a 0.1 all the way up to if you were using a 3.5 ohm coil it does uh 200 to 600 degrees black silver gray white gold i have not seen this for sale anywhere yet anywhere yet but yeah, it's a Joy Tech product, so it does have like custom TCR. It has, you know, firmware updates available. Like I said, I haven't seen this for a sale anywhere yet, so I'm not sure on the price. I'm assuming it's going to be pretty reasonable. I'm assuming it's not going to be any more than like, I don't know, 45, maybe 50 bucks with that tank included. Uh, right now, I'm rocking it with a Goblin Mini. I think I'm going to leave it like this just for a hot minute, just for a little while, because I really like just the little rinky dink size of this. But like with all my first impressions, I am going to spend a, a lot more time with this Cuboid Mini, really put it through its paces. So far, man, so far with that. Uh, with that notch coil and that square tank, it feels like a nice, complete system. It's got a big 5 mil capacity. You don't plow through juice like crazy when you're using it with temperature control mode. And I've really been enjoying it. And right now, I'm actually really enjoying it with the Goblin Mini version too. So yeah, I got a couple more. I got two last things that I wanted to talk to you about. So everybody... Everybody, everybody is kind of ripping off the Griffin. <laughs> okay, so Geek Vape released the Griffin 24 millimeter. Nope, that's not even it. It looks so much the same. I thought it was it. So Griffin, Griffin. Okay, let's backtrack one quick second. Geek Vape released the Griffin 25 millimeter atomizer. Okay, and it's the Griffin, but it's 25 millimeters, and it's got the same. 
juice flow control system, but it's a big 25 millimeter velocity style deck in there. You wick it the same way, you fill it the same way. It's just bigger and it's got a bigger deck, bigger capacity and more airflow. The trade-off is, and what this is what I'm noticing with these 25 millimeter tanks. I have the Smoke Tech 25 millimeter RTA. I've got the, uh, okay, I've got the Sense Heracles 25 millimeter RTA. I've got the Griffin 25 millimeter RTA. And there's another one. There's this one that just came in that I haven't even built on from Ogvape. I don't even know the name of it, but it's like a big 25 millimeter aromamizer. That's the trend right now for the next, I don't know, two to three months is going to be big 25 millimeter RTAs. Now, they all have so far the same downfall. Let me just vape this Griffin real quick. Uh, nope, we're going to turn you up in the wattage department. Uh, 0.15 ohm coil, I don't know, 60 watts. Let's see how it goes. Now, the juice I have on here, performance is great. Airflow, solid. The juice that I have in here is caramelized bananas, okay? I've been vaping this juice. This is one of the Epic Cloud juices that I've been vaping for freaking ever. The flavor is just horrific. God damn it. The flavor is really bad on this Griffin 25 millimeter. On the original Griffin, the 22 millimeter one, flavor was nice. On this 25 millimeter one, the flavor is not, not, not as nice at all. And that's what's bumming me out. I mean, this is caramel banana. This is one of my favorite juices and I can't really even taste it at all. Performance is nice. You know what I mean? It's got a big velocity style deck in there. It's really easy to wick. It's really easy to build. It's really easy to fill. But the flavor, man, it's got a big juice capacity too. This on paper, this should be the perfect tank. But the flavor, the flavor is just really bumming me out. Same thing goes for this. This is the Heracles, okay? This is the Heracles RTA. And shocking, shocking, it looks a lot like the 25 millimeter Griffin. It's got same style chimney, same big capacity tank, same deck on the inside, same wicking on the inside, same fill method. You turn off the juice flow, you pop open the top, bleh, screw it back down, open up your juice flow. It almost feels like a clone of the 25 millimeter Griffin. Same issue. This is that pink lemonade from Mona's Pantry. Uh, this is a new coil, 0.24 ohms, 58 watts. Let's see how it goes. Giant, giant swooshy airflow, stellar performance, tastes like basically nothing. It tastes, it almost tastes like I'm just vaping VG. Just, I just filled this up with some nicotine and VG and that's what I'm vaping. I get little to no flavor out of this tank. And man, that is such a bummer. Has somebody made a 25 millimeter tank that actually has nice flavor? Because I haven't come across it yet and I've used, I don't know, four so far. I haven't broken into that smoke tech one just yet. I haven't built it. I just haven't had the time. Maybe it has better flavor. It's a bummer, man, because these, like I said, on paper, these big tanks, huge juice capacity, nice airflow, easy to wick, easy to build, velocity style deck. It's got so much going for it and then you vape it and I just am nothing but disappointed with it. Nothing. Just tastes like nothing. Just tastes like air. It just tastes literally like nothing, man. That is, it's just the weirdest experience because with that volume of just creamy vapor, I feel like I should be tasting something, but I am not tasting anything. All right, so the last and first impression of the night, uh, I've actually had this for a couple days now. This is the Gear RDA. This thing, wow, is completely ridiculous. First of all, look how tall it is. It's taller than Matt's uh, drip tank. Like, taller 
than Matt's drip tank, and it's just a dripper. Now, this is a confusing, confusing atomizer because it's just got so much shit going on that you can't even really describe it. So it looks like through those through those, you know, triangles of airflow. Oh, juice in my mouth. It looks like it's got side airflow, but it does not. It has bottom airflow. What's happening is these big triangles of airflow right here, they're going in, then down the outside of the housing, and then up through the bottom, right? Weird, right? Really weird. Uh, same thing goes for this t for this dripper that is going for those big RD or those big tanks. Flavor, man. The flavor is nothing to write home about. Huge velocity style deck on the inside, and you can kind of see this top cap has these whoops has these big notches cut out into it, and then these smaller notches. Those smaller notches line up with notches here, and then those bigger notches line up with your airflow. So. The air goes in, hits the side wall of the atomizer, then is forced down, then goes up through the bottom. To drip on this, I pop off that top, I paint my juice onto the coils like I would the Sub-Zero RDA. This all can only go back together one particular way. This is the weirdest effing atomizer that I have ever come across. The performance is great, the airflow is really nice, you can vape your wicks dry, but ugh, the flavor, Beh, the flavor's been pretty, pretty junky, man. Flavor. I'm not okay with this trend of bad flavor in atomizers and tanks. I like flavor, which is probably why I'm attracted to, like, the Dot Mod Petri, because it's got that, ooh, that good flavor, nice chamber, and then just, oh, it's, it's just good. So, yeah. That's going to wrap up my first impressions. Um, I don't have anything prepared as far as a retro vape. I don't have a review for things that never got reviewed because this first impressions just went on uh, a little bit too a little bit too long. But what I want to do now um, before we announce the giveaway winner is uh, I want to do my favorite comment of the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I should have included this in the shout outs, and this is kind of a great story, but Ronan uh, is the organizer of, he's, he's now it's called Vape Invasion, and previously it was called uh, Vape Fest Ireland, right? So I, when I was in Ireland, I spent the whole weekend kind of hanging out with Ronan and his girlfriend, Sarah, and I was telling him a story about how you know, uh, at vape meets, I, I sign things. I sign lanyards and hats and t-shirts and mods. And I always thought it would be just hilarious in my brain as if someone was like, hey, bro, will you sign my mod? And I'm like, oh, sure. And then instead of signing my name, I just draw a giant dick on it and hand it back to him with like a straight face. Like, here you go. Like, I just think that would be hilarious to do to somebody, but I've never, like, worked up the courage to do it because, you know, who wants to have a giant dick on their mod? So <laughs> we were talking about this, and Sarah was like, well, put your money where your mouth is. What would you draw, you know, on someone's mod? And I was like, well, get me some paper. And so we're in the hotel lobby one night. We're drinking Buckfast. I'm hanging out with... Ronan and Sarah and Teshi's there and Phil's there and a bunch of people there. Big Philly, not not Bissardo, Big Phil from local. And I drew this majestic, like super bad status dong with Grim kind of spraying out of the tip of it. It was majestic and mighty. And Sarah took a picture of me holding it like, here's what I would draw on a mod. And... <laughs> Ronan and Sarah printed out this picture of me holding this drawing and framed it, and it is now hanging above their bed. <laughs> what? That is 
That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love Ronan and Sarah to death. I cannot wait to see them again. We I just hung out with Ronan at the at you know the Vape Jam UK. We had a great time. I love this guy. I love Sarah. And they have a picture of me framed hanging above their bed of me holding a piece of paper with a giant dong drawn on it with Grimm squirting out the tip of it. Yeah. So that's that's a thing. Just let that sink in that that's actually a thing. So getting on to the first comment of the week, a fellow named Ryan uh, left a comment on one of my videos. I'm not sure which one that just said, you're a fag and you look like a fucking penis. <laughs> Do I resemble a penis? I've never looked in the mirror and thought, wow, I look like a dick. A uh, fellow named Adam Reber, uh, I was very, very confused by this comment. He just left a comment that said, I'd a two in pain train. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know, Adam. Uh, I, I, I simply do not know what that means. Last comment of the week. A guy named Ed uh, left a comment on a video that was of one mod. I believe it was the iStick TC100 watt video. Uh, he left a comment that just said, both mods look like farts. <laughs> what? What? First of all, Ed, uh, f you can't visually see farts. Like they don't exist unless you're using some sort of specialized fart sensing camera. And I don't see how that could even compare. Why would, first of all, the video was about one mod. I had one mod in that video, but you said both mods look like farts. Well, there you go. Ed must be from uh, boring and I don't know. I don't know. So let's get, you know what? Let's. Let's announce these giveaway winners. What I want to do is uh, we had a Photoshop contest going for the Chieftain. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to throw some other stuff in there. I'm going to throw some juice in there. I'm going to throw a BMI Goldie RDA in there, as well as the T-shirt size of your choice. And that choice is either large or extra large. Those are your two choices. But what I want to do is I'm going to show some of my favorites via this smooth jazz slideshow. So all pretty much amazing, right? There were some really, really good ones. There was the one where the guy turned me into an atomizer. Grim has been wicked, and he has been juiced, and vapors. There were some really great ones in there. The Seinfeld one was hilarious, where I'm holding a sausage and just kind of staring at it, and... Trust me, there can only be one winner. I would love to send all of you something, but for this contest, there can only be one winner. But don't lose heart. There will be another contest coming up very, very soon. But there was one, there was one in particular that made me laugh more than all of the others. And I don't know if it was just the time I got this email, when I saw it, the mood I was in, but a fellow named Doug did this one of me <laughs> sitting in the president's chair with an afro pointing at my shirt. 
and I don't know why, I just saw that one, and I literally laughed out loud. So, Doug, you know what? You win. I think that's amazing. Um, I'm going to contact you and get your mailing info and T-shirt size, and uh, that's it. You won. You're the you're the you're the champion of this sort of Photoshop contest. But like I said, don't worry. There's there's plenty, plenty, plenty more contests coming up. I've got a whole mess of stuff. I'm going to get together a couple boxes of stuff. We're going to do some big giveaways uh, before I head out to VPX Vegas. In fact, at Vape Bash and at VPX Las Vegas, I'm going to be bringing some Grim Green shirts with me. That's right. And I'm going to be giving them out to just, I don't know, random people. Like, how crazy is that? Anyway, so like I said, as you guys are watching this, I'm going to be gone at Vape Bash, but... That's what I got for the vlog this week. We do have a lot of very cool, very cool stuff coming up. A lot of mods, a lot of RDAs, a lot of RTAs, a lot of 25 millimeter RTAs, unfortunately, that lack flavor. But all of that stuff we're going to have coming up because really that's what vaping is. If you guys haven't got a chance yet, head over to cultureofclouds.com. Give the podcast a little bit of a listen. Uh, me and Ruby Roo have just, like I said, been having an a mulsing time uh, recording it and just it's been really good it's been really really fun times and I'm really honestly truly and honestly very proud of this podcast and we're having a great time with it so that's what I got is there anything else that I need to say that I need to wrap up I think that's all I got everybody thank you so much for watching I'm gonna grab my little hooligan box mod here I'm gonna grab my theorem tank and I'm gonna vape tonight but that's what I got thank you so much for watching everybody and as always yes let's keep on vaping